Hello, and welcome to this talk about Apache Kermon, the next generation of enterprise integration. My name is Klaus Ibsen. I'm a software engineer from Red Hat. I'm an Apache member, Java champion, wrote a couple of books on Kermon, and I'm from Denmark. Joined by me, we have my good friend and colleague from Red Hat, uh, Andrea Cosentino. He is also a Apache member and is the current PMC chair of Apache Camel. Uh, Andrea lives in Rome, Italy. We are actually just the warm-up band. And by that, I mean there are going to be some great talks followed by us. Um, for example, the next talk is by Christina Lin. So we're going to go more in depth with Camel on Cloud Native. I'm looking forward to see what she is uh, talking about. Uh, she is an awesome uh, advocate for uh, Apache Camel uh, integration and you know IT in general. After that, we have Nicola uh, talking about the latest innovation in the Camel products, Camelets. Um, all about that. Nicola is uh, the co-creator of Camel K, so he has some awesome ideas and some great things coming from him. At the end of the day, we have um, an exciting thing also happening in Camel. Uh, a new thing is to use Camel together with something called JBang. And for that, we have Tata Yossi to talk about that. But let's get started with Camel. So what is Apache Camel? Well, if to illustrate that, we can picture Camel as a switch knife of integration. Now, actually, Camel is a giant Swiss knife because it comes with a lot of great functionality. But don't be afraid. You can just use the pieces you need. So it's not a bloated uh, library. You just use what you need and then learn more and more features in Camel. And you can use them if you really need to be. Now, what do you use Camel for? You use Camel for integration. So Camel is an integration library or framework, if you would rather use that word. So when you have different systems that need to be integrated, those systems may use different transports and protocols and the structure of the data are different and you need to convert the data, to map the data, transform it, and you have to route it in different ways and you have to handle it if there's some problems and you have to do read delivery and many other things. So it can quickly get out of hand on how complex that can be. So why build that from scratch or by yourself. Why not use Camel? Now, Camel is based on um, something called Enterprise Integration Patterns. And that is actually from a book that was published 15 years ago. So the authors of the book, Gregor Hobby and Bobby Wolf, um, saw the same problems occurring over and go again when they were helping their clients with integration and messaging. So what they did was to write down about these problems and that became actually a book. So now we have a common standard for um, integrations. So we have a standard for routing messages based on the content, filter them and send to a dynamic number of recipients. You can split and aggregate and so on. So that is just a book. So what Camel is, is an implementation of these patterns and many other things. You can use Camel to integrate anything or almost anything through the many components. So Camel has more than you can count. We have more than 300, getting closer to towards you know 400, but it may take a little more while. So a component is also something you can think of as a connector. So you can use a component to connect different systems. And speaking of components then there are many of them and they can be categorized in different things so you have you know typical file base uh, with uh, FTP, XML, CSV files and JSON and many other things. You have protocols for networking with TCP, UDP, um, IoT uh, protocols and many other things. You have the cloud both private and public and public of course the big uh, the big ones are Amazon, Azure and Google and there are also, you know, Hawaii Cloud coming up and many other things. Um, messaging, we have the traditional messaging uh, brokers with JMS, RabbitMQ, Kafka and other things. And just, I'd also like to uh, 
pick on or highlight a, a product called Debesium. If you're not familiar with that, then I tell you, suggest to take a look at that. It's about change data capture, how you can change a uh, captured um, events from your databases and route them to Kafka, for example. And Camel has great integration with that. For APIs, of course, there are all the social medias and many other things you can integrate with, and so on. Now, in Camel, then, um, how you define how systems are integrated is using a, a Camel route or Camel routes, and you use um, code for that. So you can use Java code, XML, and Ruby, Kotlin, whatnot. You you can pick and choose. Camel is polyglot. So uh, from here, the two examples on Java and XML are actually doing the same thing. They are taking buckets or file buckets from Amazon S3 and sending to a Telegram bot. Now, um, I have to say that Camel executes whether you use Java code or XML, it executes as the same bytecode processing at runtime. So there's no penalty or overhead of using one versus the other. It's what you can, your choice. So if, for example, if you're using XML, it's not does not have a, a lower performance than over Java, for example. It's fully flexible. You can choose what you want. Camel runs on all popular um, Java runtimes, and you can also, of course, run it alone. And I have to say again and stress that Camel is just a library. It's not a service technology. It's not something you download and install, like Tomcat or Wildfly or something, or Kafka. You, but Camel just is a set of jars that you can bundle and put together maybe with your application and deploy in those application servers. And Camel, of course, also runs with on the cloud with Kubernetes and so on. The Camel community is really awesome. You know, Camel is part of the Apache Software Foundation, so we have a fantastic foundation for having our project and the community. Camel is a product that is 14 years old. It was started in 2007, so it's the biggest and most active open source community for integration software. Uh, we have many contributors over the time. About 780 or so is the latest GitHub stat. And that keeps on. Um, people are keeping on contributing, and of course, that's we are very opening and welcoming community. It's from the Apache Software Foundation, so it's very trusted foundation. So anybody can pick and use the software and contribute. And Apache is um, one of the top Apache projects for many years um, in terms of activity, whether it's commits and activity in in other areas. If you look at the bottom, then is the uh, is the from GitHub is the activity on commits on on the main branch, and you can see that there's always con um, things happening on the project is very active and very alive. So it's well steps in a mature product. It has proven track for of doing releases and so on. So you're not let's say be worried that the product will you know slow and and, and die and whatnot. It's in fact pick, picking up. The pace, and what we've been doing here in 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 the latest uh, big uh, version of Camel Camel Tree is to go from a monolithic product to uh, uh, sub projects. So what I'm going to say is that we have Camel product. The core product is the switch knife of integration. That's the foundation for everything. Then you have Camel on Spring Boot. This is great integration with Spring Boot, and many people are using Camel on Spring Boot. If you're using OSGI, then we have the Camel Carafe product for Apache Carafe based OSGI runtimes. It's well established. Many are using that in production and has been for many years. It's, uh, it's a very long product with Camel. Camel K is uh, one of the newer products that are introduced in Camel Tree um, to run Camel with serverless on Kubernetes. And Nicole is going to talk about that in his talk. Yeah, and also in, in Camel Tree, we introduced uh, Camel on Quarkus, which is a very exciting thing. Um, if you're not familiar with Quarkus, then I really recommend to take a look at what that product is. If you are familiar with Spring Boot, then you can kind of see Quarkus as something similar to Spring Boot, but it's actually more, uh, more uh, 
advanced in the sense that it is optimized and, and it's actually for cloud native, it's Kubernetes friendly and many other things. It's really a fantastic and um, a great new product coming around. So it's really be gaining a lot of popularity and I recommend to take a look at that product. Uh, for Kafka, then the, we have Camel Kafka connectors. So what we've done is to take the Camel components as is, and then we sort of source code generate those components as if they are a um, true Kafka connector component. So you can install and download these connectors into your Kafka connector uh, nodes, and then you can configure them and so on. So it's more a configuration-driven approach of using Camel components. I will say that for Kafka connectivity, then maybe also look at the latest innovation product in Camel, Camel Camelets. This is fantastic and really awesome things going on. I will not steal the thunder. You know, Andrea is gonna talk about that later in this talk and show demo. But you know, the big bread and brother is coming from Nicola, where he has a full session on Camelets. I will say that if Andrea and Nicola does not you know, touch so, so much upon it, that but camels are universal to camel. They can be used anywhere with camels, so you can use them and stand alone on Spring Boot, on Carafe, on Kafka, on Camel K, on Quarkus, whatever you want to use, camels can be used. And that's very important to make them reusable against all the runtime, so it's not tied to only, let's say, Camel K. And that's very important, and we really emphasize on that. They're becoming universal. And actually, Tata Yoshi in his JBang thing, Camelis is also there, so take a look at that. So I also want to talk about, we changed the release model for Camel in version 3, that is important to know. So in Camel 3, we introduced what is called an LTS and a non-LTS releases. LTS, long-term support, in Camel that means a year or so, may be longer, but we are not, let's say, we want to be moving ahead in the Camel product, so we don't you know, do very long-term support for, for Camel. Um, an LTS release, at that point, we do get uh, security fixes and patches out, especially if there are security fixes that are in the Camel itself. So, you know, that's important to get fixed there, but also third-party dependencies may have security uh, fixes and so on. We pick them up and, and do a releases of that. Um, then in between we have a non-LTS release which is just released as is and you can use them as you want. Um, great for picking up the latest things going on in Camel, try that, test with that, develop with that, and even run in production, yes, because you know the there will be a new LTS release coming coming out of the years. We do two LTS releases per year in June and December. So we just released uh, 3.11 in, in June, uh, gonna run for a year or so. Then we plan to do 3.12 with 13, and then, then the next LTS is 3.14 by the end of the year. And we hope to pick up the Java 17 support for that. We do track the latest Java versions, like 14, 15, 16, which has been been released over the time. And then, you know, we find things and make sure Camel can compile and work and run on those. And we are waiting to pick up Java 17 and work on that for official support in, in 3.14, hope so. So now the main focus for my, for my part is to get you up to speed on what we've been doing on, on Camel version 3 to make it the next generation Camel, especially around to support Camel for today's and tomorrow's workloads, so make Camel relevant for any kind of workloads, whether you're using it on the cloud or whether you're going to use it just with Spring Boot, Quarkus, and other microservice frameworks or traditional app servers, then you know Camel is evolved and what we've been doing there. So we made the big focus for Camel Tree was to make Camel optimized and very fast for startup and low memory footprint. Not saying that Camel Two is is none of that. Up but you know, there was always an opportunity to do more and we need a sort of like a, a big refactoring in that. So what we've done is to modelize Camel cells. So for Camel 2, there was one big monolithic jar and what we've done is to split that up, pay attention to 42 jars, from one to 42. Then the idea is that you can just pick what you need to 
instead of having the big jar, you can choose what you really need and have less jar and less classes and whatnot. We optimize the routing engine inside Camel. This is the critical Camel what you're using Camel for is to route meshes. And we done make sure that this has been profiled and we have made sure for example that the routing engine is not doing something that if it doesn't have to, you know, if a feature is not available, it's not turned on or whatnot, that part is totally skipped and not included in a part of the routing engine. So what it, the CPU is processing, what is executing, is just uh, what is needed. We also made sure to reduce the number of, let's say, method calls that are executed as part of routing a message to reduce that with all the call sites and things going on in, in the DVM itself and also collapse the thread stack sizes so they are smaller. That allows to reduce the memory overhead. So if you have a lot of kind of threads, um, then the thread sizes are smaller and whatnot. And speaking of mem low memory footprint, I just did a recent um, a quick profiling of camel, started up a camel application with a typical little camel application. And then I profiled the object allocation on the heat. That was less than five megabytes, four and a half actually. Uh, and that was Camel, the logging framework, and some components, and then the Java itself that were allocating less than five megabyte on the heat, and that's very low. During routing, we also make sure that Camel itself is not allocating new objects on the heap if it doesn't have to, so that's reduced quite a lot. And in fact, there's even a new feature in, in Camel Tree you can turn on, it's called Exchange Pooling. You can find information on the Camel website. If that turn on, then the idea is to reuse exchange. And exchange is sort of like the is the holder of the is the entity that holds the information of the message itself. So it messes body headers and metadata and many other things. So what the idea is to recycle these exchanges instead of throwing them away and having to create new exchanges when a new message arrives. So there's a pool of this. And that also reduces the garbage collection need. So essentially, if the routing engine and with the exchange pool and turned on, then all the allocations needed on object allocation that are happening is because of activity from you know the the message content itself. So the message head body and the header itself, of course, that needs to be allocated, and maybe some of the third party components are doing some stuff as well as but the routing engine and the camel itself has you know, zero head on very little overhead on that. Camel is also reflection free in the sense that all the configuration and how you set up camel and bootstrap camel is done without executing reflection which is fantastic as a unique framework I would say compared to others. It's also very cloud native friendly, reduce the let's say overhead of starting up and the memory uses and whatnot is also very friendly towards native compilation with Graal VM where reflection is forbidden by default. Um, Camel is also um, now phased in startup with additional phase. We have a build phase now which we exploit to do some build time optimization when you for example are using Camel and Quarkus and then you need a start phase so that's more separated now. Camel is cloud native, um, and in Camel Three is is more true than let's say in Camel Two. So we have the core product, which is the foundation for everything. But there are two sub products that are focused for for cloud: Camel Quarkus and Camel K in particular. Camel Quarkus it can of course also be run anywhere because Quarkus framework is you know you can run it in on bare metal or whatever you want to use. But the Quarkus product is also focusing on be a true cloud native framework or Kubernetes first as they say and by using Quarkus and Camel then you'll also get that benefit. Camel is polyglot and by that I mean you can write your integration in any kind of language you want. Java is of course very most used, XML as well and YAML you can also Used as a new one we introduced in Camel Tree, and and for YAML is actually because it plays a huge part in in Camelus, but also YAML is sort of like um, a de facto language or uh, markup language used by by Kubernetes, so it makes sense to have that as well in Camel. And you know you can also use uh, other programming links like Groovy Kotlin and JavaScript. And we've done more in in Camel Tree to make um, the DSL able to 
generate um, multiple DSLs. So the YAML DSL is the testimony of that, and it's source code generated based on the model we have. And we're gonna continue on that avenue um, for for the future for more in DSLs. In the, and you can mix and match whatever you want to use. So you can use some write some code in Java. You can add some XML or even YAML, and they can all play together. What gets executed by runtime is the same bytecode by Camel processing logic. They have the same performance. There's no penalty one over the other, and so on. And what we're gonna do, for example, if you're gonna use Camel and Quarkus, is to have exploit the build time optimization, so we can actually load those routes from Java, XML, and so on, and do a build time optimization. So what is happening at runtime is that those has already been built as bytecode and executed by Camel, so there's no need to rebuild and pass, for example, XML or YAML again. And that's something we're gonna continue to enhance in, in for the second half of this year, so it's gonna be even better. Okay, that was just a side note, let's continue. One thing I also wanna say that we've done even more for, for Camel 3 is to make it very configurable. Uh, even so, in, in Camel 3, with all the sub-products, we actually made a unified configuration model, uh, sort of based on one in the core, is something called Camel Main, that makes sure that whether you use Spring Boot or Quarkus or Camel Standalone or Carafe or Kafka or something like that, then the configuration of Camel is the same model, it's the same way you configure them, so you can port applications between them, or if you've been using Camel on Spring Boot, then it's uh, very easy to migrate and use Quarkus, for example. And it's very flexible in the sense that you can have some configuration in configuration files, you can have environmental variables, and you can have config map and secrets from Kubernetes and whatnot, and all that kind of goes uh, together. And again, I have to say Camel is a very unique in the sense that it's the, probably the only framework uh, that uh, does all that reflection-free. Um, so it's very fast and efficient, there's no additional memory overhead and whatnot. Spring Boot, for example, if you use Spring Boot and its configuration mechanism, then it's all reflection-based. So now I would like to hand it over to Andrea to talk all about I'll give you an introduction to Camlets and make sure to also see uh, Nicola's talk about Camlets. So Andrea, take it away. Thanks Klaus for giving me the opportunity of talking about the Camlets, which are the which is the new new technology in uh, in the in the Apache Camel community. So uh, Camlets are the Camel route snippets. So it's something uh, like a building block, uh, giving the opportunity to, to an end user to create complex section without having any previous knowledge of Apache Camel and how Camel works. Uh, on the Apache Camel website, we already have the, some a catalog of the Camel that we are providing. You will find all those Camelets into the Camel 1.5, uh, Camel K 1.5 release. And there is still some work to do on the documentation side, but we are already at a good point, and uh, this is a good starting point for understanding what you can do with the Camelets and how you may use the this technology and this Camel K feature for your uh, day by day work. And um, we are providing more Camelets, and this is one of uh, our uh, target for the coming release. And um, um, you will have uh, the opportunity in this talk to have a look at a little demo about uh, the the Camelot binding and uh, uh, about C uh, Camelots in action. The type of Camelot. So um, the Camelots can be of three different kind at the moment. So sources for copying data from an external system to the platform. Uh, 
uh, sync camelots for copy data from the platform to an external system and actions. Actions are some middle step between source and sync camelots to manipulate data and apply, for example, enterprise, integr enterprise integration patterns, transformation and data manipulation, like, for example, data, data format and uh, marshalling and marshalling and so on. Um, those are the three different kind of camelots we are uh, currently currently providing. Uh, how a camelot look like? Uh, there are three um, major part uh, parts in in a camelot. Uh, the first part, which is related to declaration, so you will have uh, metadata related, for example, to the camelot icon, the provider of this camelot, the kind of camelot, the type of camelots, and so on. Uh, a configuration schema uh, where you get the JSON schema of the of the camelot, the required parameters, the optional parameters, um, and the data shapes. Uh, you are able to know ahead of time what kind of data uh, the camelot expect to have an input and what kind of data the uh, camelot will give you as, out, as output and uh, in the final part of the camelot you will get the route template uh, which is in the end the camel route uh, with the camel DSL and I think it's uh, important to have a look at uh, a little demo in this case so uh, Let's switch to the to the terminal. So, in this demo, I will show you uh, a Camelot binding with between a Kafka source Camelot and uh, an AWS S3 Camelot. Um, what what does it mean? Uh, we can see already uh, how a Camelot binding looks like. So. Um, Uh, this is more or less how a gamelet binding is. Uh, this is um, a relation between uh, a source and a sync camelet. So uh, by um, deploying this CRD, uh, you will create some kind of channel between a source camelet and a sync, and a sync camelet. In this case, we are pointing a, a Kafka broker through the Stringzy, Stringzy operator. Uh, and we are pointing the topic, test topic in this case. And uh, uh, we want to use a sync camelot to write to an S3 bucket. In this case, we are pointing the camelot demo bucket and uh, we are providing the credential for, the, for accessing, accessing the AWS S3 uh, service. So uh, I already have a, a file to, uh, for for providing this, this information and uh, uh, for correctly connect to the S3, S3 uh, bucket. So I just need to, to show you what we already have in the Kafka namespace on, uh, on my Minikube. So we have the Camel K operator already running. Uh, we have an old Kafka 2 S3 streaming, uh, which is what I want to show, so we can safely remove this this config. This. on the Kafka uh, on the on the on the Kafka namespace. So uh, we are already able to, to deploy this stuff. So we just need to go into the correct file. In this case, we need to create this uh, Kafka 2S3 uh, with credential uh, file and uh, apply this CRD to the Kafka namespace. And uh, since we already have Camel K operator running, this is already warmed up. So we are able to uh, already check the logs on the correct namespace. In this case, as you may see, we have already the Kafka consumer running on the test topic. So we need to provide uh, some data and uh, we already have it. So 
we can run this simple configuration and uh, we are pointing the test topic so we will be able to provide uh, a record uh, to, to Kafka so we can send something like hello for example and um, um, we we should be already able to check the content of the s3 of the s3 bucket in this case is empty but if we refresh we have a file here so this is the exchange id of the camel exchange and we have the hello file here so uh, if we if we have a look in the at, at the log of the of the integration running uh, we can see that nothing nothing is really is really logged because uh, this is something uh, consumed at runtime so there is not so much to to show about logging but this is just uh, a little a little less example of what you may have by using uh, uh, by using camlets i mean you uh, by using this approach you are able to create an integration between two different systems just by providing some configuration so you don't have to uh, understand or having any previous knowledge of camel and uh, this is quite important because open the, the the door to new users that may come even from different kind of different fields or uh, even non java developer so this is just a young file and uh, through the usage of the camelet catalog you are already able to create your camelet binding so this is something really really nice and important and i uh, personally think this is uh, a really good feature to to work on um, let's get back to the to the presentation okay we saw the demo so uh, how you you are able to instantiate uh, the the camelet uh, or creating the camelet binding you are able to do this through the camelet binding directly so uh, you can create it through the to the yum file for the for the CRD, uh, you can also write your own route by calling the the, the camelet by name, and you will create just a simple route from two, and uh, you will you will be pointing the the cam you will be pointing the, the camelets in that case, or you can ever you can also you can even uh, uh, going back to the old uh, programming style. So even adding, uh, for example, external bin and using them into your uh, camel K and uh, camelet stuff. Uh, oh, what happen? What happen if, if, for example, you don't want to create the YAM file? So, for example, you already have uh, two different binding, uh, two different camelets. For example, the Kafka and uh, the S3. So you will be able to bind these two camelets through the camel to the camel bind uh, command from camel K. Uh, what does the, this mean? In the end, uh, this command will create the camelet binding CRT for you and will deploy this to to your cluster for you uh, through the usage of the camel K operator. Uh, you will have to provide the required properties as uh, argument of this command but in the end you will get the same behavior uh, that you may have from creating the camelet binding so this is really cool if you don't want to um, work on yum file um, in the end what what you will get is something like this so from uh, from a camelet from a source and missing camelet you will get an integration in this case and uh, this will be done through the through the camel k operator uh, the camelet binding is not limited to the to the camelet point 
uh, it can be used for example to link to a standard system uh, or multiple platform for example you may point to a stream c cluster by the usage of different uh, crd like for example kafka topic but also kina the broker and uh, obviously also camelot and different camelot so there will be probably in the future um, more uh, external system to point and uh, this is another interesting point of extension for for the gamelets technology okay so uh, here you have some more information about uh, what we are doing uh, some camel k demo and uh, more, more information about, for example, also the Camel Kafka Connector project, which is part of the ecosystem, and we don't have time to uh, dig, dig, in, dig into it too much. And um, there is uh, a lot of stuff going on on the Apache Camel community, so you are all welcome to check on the documentation and to reach out on our Zulip chat, mailing list, and whatever so and obviously uh, obviously any contribution is really welcome uh, here you have the repository for the example for uh, playing camel camel k uh, with, tuto with tutorials uh, camel quarkus and so on uh, and this is and those are really interesting and i think you should have a look and uh, yeah so i think that's all from from our side so uh, if you have any question we are we are here and uh, thanks for the attention and uh, see you online